focus of this game has always been about these characters. And every decision we've made ha uh, has always been, how do we show off this relationship? How do we show off this bond? How do we build Joel and Ellie over the course of the entire game and get you to care about each character and then how they relate to one another? With Joel as a character, there's an interesting kind of um, conflict. Here is a guy that is willing to do whatever it takes to survive. And we really wanted to show in this world there aren't necessarily good guys and bad guys, there's just people trying to survive, and Joel is just one of those people. He's tasked with delivering this girl somewhere, and over the course of their interaction of how they spend time together, they form this unbreakable bond, uh, and they really start seeing them care more and more for each other. So we wanted to show this guy that's pretty cold, uh, cold-hearted, can do terrible things, and yet at the same time can develop this love for this girl where he's willing to do anything to save her. Well, it all started when uh, we saw a documentary about uh, this uh, fungus called the cordyceps. And the way that fungus works is it, um, it infects different species of insects. The fungus develops inside them, burrs its way into its mind, and takes control, essentially, of the insect. What if this thing jumps species and infected people? And that was the earliest inspiration. And so that was a really beautiful jumping off point to us because we thought we could do something unique. It wasn't just your typical ambling zombie sort of thing, but we can actually have some science behind it and ground these things. And we don't want to just make the typical like uh, ghoul. We want to actually bring the fact that this is a suffering human being that actually like if you and I were caught by this, then that's a traumatic experience. And then put yourself in Joel, Tess, and Ellie's shoes. And it's like, this is the last thing that we want to happen. These two stages, these two classes of infected that you're seeing, there's the runners. Um, and they still have a bit of vision, so they could kind of see you if you're moving around. You have to kind of watch out where they're looking. When you're dealing with something that can see you, it's much different than something that is stage three of the infection, or what they call the clickers, which is using echolocation, a form of echolocation. And then the clickers, it's all based on audio. So you have to make sure you're not making a lot of sound, you're not breaking a bottle, you're not doing something that will draw them to your location. On a psychological level as a player, I, it kind of invests me in trying to see like what's behind that, what's behind that bush, what's what's around that corner, you know. And we can play with darkness and light in there, and the sounds, etc. So we really want to like not only beautify it and say like, oh, this is really gorgeous, but at the same time, like, kind of like add that suspense in there. What you want to see is the contrast between the stark reality of the military city and that oppression versus like nature reclaiming the earth, what, what nature has done over 20 years, what the military has done fighting back the infection just to, just to get this small little hovel, like the, keeping their walls and their people contained, like okay, we're safe, keep that locked down. You're in the city and it's, in a way you're surrounded by death, there's no one there, it's locations you're familiar with that should be filled with people, should be filled with life, and they're empty. First of all, it's beautiful and creepy, like it's one of those like weird, like nature's pretty amazing kind of things. So there's a kind of darkness there, but at the same time, there's this beauty to it, whereas nature is reclaiming the earth and you're seeing all these trees and you're really drawn to explore it. And then you're also seeing the world through Joel's eyes, who's just a survivor, how am I gonna get from point A to point B? And it's contrasted against the way Ellie views the world. And it's like, again, she, all she's known is this oppressive quarantine zone. So she, when she comes out, she's never seen a skyscraper up close before. And, and uh, for her to come out and actually be next to these things, these skyscrapers, class buildings, like, wow, this is really amazing. This is really impressive. So we want to see it kind of through her eyes. In a way, they're scared for their lives. She's just enamored with the world and how it looks because she's never seen anything like this. I'm sweating. I'm sweating and I'm actually enjoying And I know how to play these things and every single time a new emergent situation like uh, exposes itself. Something new happens where a guy took a left instead of a right and that was the guy that's going to like destroy me and I got no ammo now. What do I do? And that's a, that's a beautiful feeling. 